What's up everybody, Jesse here, and before we get started, I've noticed a lot of you have been saying that some of my videos haven't been popping up in your subscription feed. So what I recommend is after you subscribe, click this little bell here, and this little message will pop up, and all you have to do is click it and save. I recommend doing this so you don't miss out on some of my collaborations or Nintendo and Zelda news theory and rumor videos. Also, don't forget to thumb up this video and remember to put your thoughts in the comments below. During the Game Explain interview with one of the actors, he said that there was stuff about the Nintendo Switch that he knew, but Nintendo hasn't announced yet. So something like motion controls or the separate batteries inside of the Joy-Cons, like it could be any of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I wasn't thinking about this before, but I mean, you have two, so I mean, if one has the motion control in it and it's likely the right, uh, Joy-Con, because I think I was hearing something about it with the IR sensor for the right side, um, if it's got motion controls on it, then you don't really need it for the left side, just like with the nunchuck on the, on the, uh, Wiimote. Um, yeah, are, you're looking at, uh, a picture of the switch right now yeah yeah all right um to make sure that we are looking at the same one i'm going to send you an image really quick okay. all right so if you click on that page yeah i see it um uh, at the bottom Mm -hmm. of the switch the actual not the joy cons but the switch mm -hmm. there looks like they're a little off to the left from the center it looks like a little circle that could be a camera or something and oh, then yeah. uh to the like on the bottom left and then the bottom right those yeah. Yeah. could just be speakers but if the speakers are on the back of this thing then those two things could be ir sensors like on the Wii sensor bar. Okay. Yeah, that, that that makes sense, honestly. So like if you, you know, set it up or docked it in front of the TV, mm -hmm. then if the IR sensor is built into it, then you wouldn't really need a connection for it, and it would still allow you to play some of the Wii games on the go. Like I think... Um, yeah, that's true. Whenever they first showed off the Wii U, and it was a function that they never really used. Um, the Wii U gamepad has IR sensors built in to it. Mm -hmm. That way you can, you know, if someone's using the TV, you can still play some of the Wii games on the gamepad with the Wiimote. But I never really seen Nintendo advertise it other than on the initial trailer. Or like during their initial oh, announcement that, for it. Oh, that golfing part? Or yeah, I, I think that was it. Yeah, yeah. They never really put that into into the works, like you said. Um, but yeah, I mean, that that would be pretty cool, and it it does look like that could be a possibility, especially with the rumors that we've been getting lately. Yeah. Um, so, okay. what do you think the uh, bottom left button? Like, there's the home button on the right Joy-Con, but all the way on the left. What do you think that is for? Do you think that's like a share button similar to like the PS4 or um hmm it de it definitely it could be a share button or let's see it could be something more akin to an actual like um a uh, power button for the whole console itself um I don't yeah, know if they have those on the Switch, though. Like, I'm not seeing any buttons on the Switch itself. Yeah, you, you would imagine it would be on top or on the bottom, which yeah. the picture's only showing the front, so... Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to look for my 3DS. Also, what are your thoughts on... Uh, since we're just kind of discussing it right now, uh, like, the left Joy-Con has, uh, I guess, what we would call the C buttons, like C up, down, C left, C right... Mm -hmm. uh, do you think, like, if you buy this, is that <laughs> what we're going to get? Or do you think it'll be a traditional D-pad on that side? Or do you think later on they will have uh, different styles to where if you want one with the traditional D-pad, then you can buy the Joy-Con that has it? Uh, I, I think that's what's going to come stock. Uh, yeah, definitely. Because 
if if you remember the first uh, Wii U gamepad they showed off, it had the circle pads that are on the 3DS, mm-hmm. and then the design for the Wii U gamepad changed when they actually launched it. Oh, okay. So, do you think these designs are pretty final, or do you think there's still some room for changes? I think they're pretty final only because they revealed it so close to the release date. Uh, yeah. And, you know, th- this is pretty unprecedented with what they did. Like, nobody's done that before with a console, and I... Well, I take that back. I think Sega did it. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. uh, and, and it flopped for them. So, uh, <laughs> Nintendo... Uh, I think is is this is the final product. This is what we're getting. Um, I do think that the gameplay showing was was uh, not the gameplay that we might be getting for the console uh, during the reveal trailer. But you never. Do know. you mean just for like the Nintendo games or um, all of the games? No, not all of the games. But I, I I think just the the graphical power. They made it look better for the for the reveal trailer for sure. Yeah, like uh, if if it's running the Skyrim enhanced edition then like that like you know we we all know breath of the wild what it looks like you know it is uh i would i wouldn't necessarily say a graphical or like a graphic intense game but it like this just the sheer scope of it is huge but even though like the world itself and everything is larger than what we would expect from or what we know is in skyrim the I don't really know how to say this. I went over it a little bit on the last video that we had with Ashley, but seeing Skyrim, what I traditionally associate with like having um, like a high-end PC to run the game on max settings and everything, in which, you know, it's been a few years since it's released now, so you don't really need a high-end PC. But that's traditionally what I associate Skyrim with, is like maxed out settings and everything. So to see like an enhanced version of that running on this system that you can take with you on the go is what really blew my mind. Like, you know, obviously Zelda looks great, the Mario game looked great, uh, but Skyrim, even though it's not one of my favorite games, that's what kind of blew my mind. That this massive, you know, 100 hour game that people will get lost in for hours at a time is now a handheld experience Mm -hmm. so yeah and i think uh bethesda came out and said that that was just a a demo or something like that um yeah but it was probably on a dev kit and most of the time dev kits have uh you know like more ram added to them um to make it easier for them to develop debugging features and stuff yeah all that type of stuff so uh, it was likely played on a console like that and they recorded the footage um, and sent it to Nintendo, or Nintendo did whatever to get that footage um, to put it on the Switch reveal trailer. Um, now, I don't think it's going to look that good on the actual Switch, if it even does come out for it. Um, but I think it will look pretty good. If, if this thing's on par with... Um, I, I was hearing something like it having... Um, one 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 teraflop 1.2 teraflops and that's getting into territory that i know nothing about um, <laughs> yeah but um, when comparing the, it the to... only thing that i've heard spec wise was that i think it had four gigabytes of ram oh, okay so i mean that <laughs> i i think that would be average like if you go out and buy like a mid-range tablet or something it mm. would have around that many gigabytes of ram uh like I used to have, uh, like I wouldn't say it was a low end, like a mediocre laptop from years and years ago that had four gigabytes of RAM. So, uh, you know, the Wii U has two, and if this has four, then um, even if the GPU can't really process a lot of stuff, then the RAM itself would allow you to keep more things on screen at the same time or to allow you to switch between different apps faster. So, mm-hmm. Uh, like more RAM typically uh, it would let you load uh, like a farther draw distance mm-hmm. like if you're playing Breath of the Wild on the Wii U where it only has the 2 gigabytes of RAM once you get say 100 feet out there might start being that fog that kind of hides everything but where the Switch has 
like double the capacity of RAM, you might be able to see like 150 or 200 feet away before the fog starts getting too dense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and the, the, I mean, if it's got four gigs of RAM, I think that's that's satisfactory for a Nintendo console. Um, I mean, I think what uh, Sony and Microsoft have what eight, I think. Or is yeah, it six? On, on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, they yeah. both have eight. And when I when I was talking about the uh, teraflops earlier, it those only have like one point something. So it's not it's not that big of a gap in between the two. There is a gap, but there isn't at the same time. Um, yeah. Because I believe and that the Tager chip that is already out is is around one one get, teraflop or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and and the thing is. Uh, you know these consoles released like wasn't it 2012 or 2013 yeah, yeah. somewhere so around there they like these consoles would have been out for 3 to 4 years before this new handheld comes out and even inside PlayStation's own family like if you the PlayStation 1 came out and then uh, the PS2 and then we got the PSP mhm and the PSP was close to what the PlayStation 1 was in terms of graphics. And then the PlayStation uh, 3 came out and we got the Vita, which was close to what the PlayStation 3 was. So mm-hmm. if this thing comes out, or well, hold on, going back again to PlayStation, if PlayStation released a successor to the PlayStation Vita, after you know releasing the PlayStation 4, now you would expect this handheld to have close to the uh, power that the PlayStation 4 does, mm-hmm. since that is the the approach that PlayStations had. And even with the 3DS on Nintendo's side, the 3DS and new 3DS is able to run some of the GameCube and Wii titles. Mm-hmm. So if the 3DS was as powerful as uh, the Wii was, then you could expect that the Switch itself, which we already know it's at least as powerful as the Wii U, but if we go by the past patterns with like handhelds that come out compared to other consoles Mm -hmm. around that time, then I would say this was closer to the Xbox One power level than it would be to the Wii U. Mm-hmm. I, agree I agree with that. Because I don't... Like, even though Nintendo wants to be, like, releasing that not necessarily cheap product, but value-friendly product, like how the Wii and the Wii U was, mm-hmm. I don't think they want to come out with a new console, and again, they're calling this their next home console, that is less powerful or not even close to being as powerful as the consoles that their competitors came out with three to four years ago. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what (coughs) I'm thinking that it's going to be closer. Like it's going to be in the middle of the Wii U and the PS4, but I think it's going to lean more towards the PS4. Yeah, definitely. Um, (coughs) One thing that I, (coughs) <coughs> that I notice is they're trying to get um, more people from from these these companies that that uh, you know the average consumer who likes graphical capabilities and stuff like that with their consoles and they're trying to draw those people in a little bit you know um, just trickle them in because they need they need a little bit of that support and as long as they have third party support and uh their whatever architecture they're using is easy to write for and stuff like that and it doesn't conflict as badly as the wii u did it's gonna be golden um i mean as long as it's easy as easy to write on that as it is a ps4 xbox one which i doubt it will be i'm sure it will be a little bit more difficult uh knowing nintendo um I think will be good so and that that's another thing is uh you know whenever the wii u launched they kind of bragged about how they had all of this third-party support we've seen uh, especially from ubisoft we've seen third-party exclusives for the wii u which almost didn't exist like two to three years later even some of those 
exclusives like uh, Rayman Legends, I believe, and Zombie U ended up coming out on PlayStation 4 and other consoles when, you know, they were originally exclusive to the Wii U. And all of the other uh, Wii U ports of third-party games that we got, I think that was because, um, like, the Wii U was close to what the PS3, like, it was more powerful, but it was still close to what the PS3 and 360 was Mm -hmm. compared to the PlayStation 4. So it wasn't necessarily that hard for them to take these games that they had already made and work on it for a couple of months or however long and port it to the Wii U to whereas uh, you know a few years later they're not necessarily working on PS3 or 360 games now they're working on PS4 and Xbox One games Mm -hmm. and then to take one of those games and dumb it down to where it will work on the Wii U would take a lot more time and where the Wii U wasn't selling that well it really wasn't worth the effort so yeah exactly the Wii U lost a lot of its third party support and the same thing is going to happen with the uh, Nintendo Switch unless Nintendo has you know actually learned from their mistakes so making it close to PS4 and Xbox One would kind of uh, make it easier for the third-party developers to port their games over uh-huh. since um because like a lot of third-party developers on just the playstation 4 and xbox one how they're coming out with the scorpio and the playstation 4 pro uh i noticed especially with indie devs but even some of the larger like <sighs> running out of breath here but uh <laughs> you're good like i know some of the third party developers were excited about it because uh you know more powerful hardware you're able to do more things but other developers were kind of frustrated with it because now instead of making a game for playstation 4 and xbox one now you have to make a second version for the playstation 4 pro or you have to make a second version for the xbox scorpio so now that you know they were just focused on making two separate versions now they have to make four that look better than the original and with the switch coming out are they going to take the time to work on a dumbed down version of it to fit on the switch well well a similar thing happened to the ps3 um Back when the PS3 first came out, that thing was so overpriced. It was very powerful, but it was super overpriced. And um, and don't worry, I'm gonna come full circle on this. Um, <laughs> fully over, it was really overpriced, and it had a lot of capabilities though, and it had a lot of features. And those features were able to push that console enough to where later in its lifespan, like at first, the third party devs were like, "Oh no, we're not gonna code for that." So we're just going to put everything on the 360 and not work with Sony. Um, and then they found out that a lot of people bought it. So they went and they they ended up going back and making those games for the PS3. And towards the end of its lifespan, it sold enough to not be a failure in their eyes. Um, and I think that if Nintendo gets enough Nintendo Switches in, in people's hands... The third-party uh, devs will go to it solely for the fact that they're going to make money on it. Um, that That's the whole bottom line there, is that they got to be able to get this thing into everybody's hands. The second they do, the third-party devs will have no problem making a dumbed-down version for it, because everybody will want to be able to take that on the go. Um, and they'll probably sell more copies of it if you can. So, depending. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't go out and buy... Um, like Skyrim, I wouldn't go out and buy a new Oblivion game for the Nintendo Switch. I'm just being honest. I'd either get it for my PC or my PS4. And yeah, you, I probably you would, would get opt it for out. What looks best. Yeah, I'd probably opt out of the PS4. Like The Witcher 3, I bought it for my PC. I didn't buy it for my PS4. Um, and that's, you know, that's a game that looks really freaking amazing on the PC. So, <laughs> yeah. And there's uh in a similar way there was um when I had a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One, 
whenever you would go out to buy a third party game because uh, obviously you know you're going to buy the exclusives that you want for whichever console uh, that they come out for but when it comes to the third party in cases like I know Assassin's Creed Black Flag like some of the launch titles um, on the PlayStation 4 they were in 1080p but on the uh, Xbox One they were 900p or 720p so if you had both consoles and you're going out to buy one of those games why would you pay the same price for the inferior version mm -hmm. and I think that's what Nintendo is going to have to battle with is or Nintendo fans whenever they buy this if they already have a PlayStation 4 or something are you going to choose better graphics over portability yeah, and I, I think that that's something that they're going to have to tactically go about with uh, with which which games they allow or which games they're going to support heavily for the third party um, and try to get those games on it. And I, I'm guessing it's going to be game more games that are less graphically intensive um, yeah. and ones well, that... Yeah, I, I think all of the EA games, like, if you run them on a computer, you don't really need, you know... a powerful system to run them at max settings mm -hmm. so i think those will look visually similar across the board but when you get into those games like uh the witcher or whatever then you might be you know choosing between which uh version you want yeah and i think there nintendo's going to rely on their their first party support for games to look absolutely uh breathtaking um you know, because even Mario Kart 8, Smash Bros, looks great. Uh, yeah. They know how to make their games, even though they're, the console is underpowered. They know how to make their games look next gen, you know, right. without without a lot of work. So, All right. So we've been on this topic for quite a while. So are there <laughs> any uh, final concerns that you would like to bring up about the Nintendo Switch before we move on? Um... No, personally, I'm not too concerned about it, but I'm a freaking Nintendo fanboy, so... <laughs> yeah. What's up, everyone? This is Jesse, and welcome to the Inslate. I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you're a fan of my Zelda or gaming news theory or discussion videos like this, please consider supporting this channel by donating through patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can get new videos early, be able to join on discussion or theory videos, get shoutouts, and tons of other great rewards. Thank you all so much for allowing me to do this, watching my videos, and especially you Alex Myers, Jonathan, The Itch Network, Magic Tech Review, Mike Priest, and John Frank for your support on Patreon.